Hi, this is Jan speaking from SA Environment. Uh, I would like to talk about Pro Tools meters and meters in general. So, uh, I would like to start with a quick demonstration, and uh, therefore I first like to uh, introduce you to my Pro Tools session where we have a click channel and also an aux track. So let's go through them one by one and just uh, listen to the click for a second. There it is, and on the next channel. Uh, I've got some some pink noise. Good. Um, okay, so let's just do something that we generally shouldn't be doing. Let's just turn the sound off for now and uh, mix by numbers. So let's zoom in on the bottom of the Protoss channels. On the left side you can see the numerical fader position. It's a unit gain for both. And the value on the right hand side indicates the current peak value. So uh, if I just turn it back on, and if we just look at these values, they can come up to quite different numbers. Um, and I would like to align these two so that they're exactly the same. So at the moment we can see we're 17.4 dBs apart. So I use the floating window and numerically type in negative 17.4, which once we reset should get both values exactly to the same level and which now indicates that um, we have the same signal there. Good. Let's turn the sound back on and have a listen. You might be wondering if that's correct. Yes, we're listening to both signals. Here's uh, the noise in solo. And here's the click. We actually hear both. Well, you probably realize that we, uh, these two signals don't even sound remotely the same volume. And that is because we're measuring peak value. Peak value is a very poor way to measure the perceived loudness or the loudness. So therefore, let's just right click in the meters and have a quick look what options we have. There's a lot going on. And I just want to focus on two things that are relevant. The Cl Protoss Classic meter is a peak meter and it measures the highest peak of a signal and we just learned that that doesn't give us a good indication of how loud it is actually perceived. Instead let's switch to RMS which stands for root mean square and it's a mathematical algorithm that averages out the overall value. Um, what we now see is this big fat green bar which shows us the current RMS value. In addition we can see a little one pixel wide line that shows us the current peak value, which is still at negative 20. So the value down here is still shows peak. If we um, play back both signals again, I will now align the volume of both signals to show about the same RMS before we turn the sound back on. It's a bit hard to get because they're constantly on the move, so we want to aim for the RMS of the noise to sit about there. So the click is a bit higher and a bit lower sometimes. So let's turn the sound back on and have a listen. And I believe you could hear that um, we now heard both pink noise and click um, fairly equally loud. Whether that's perfect is another question, but um, it's about the same. What we Dealing, what we're dealing with is two different meters that showcase or that highlight different areas of your mix. The peak meters are really good for transient materials. That's everything that has a very sharp rise in volume, like kicks or snares or percussion or triangles. While the pink noise could represent signals that have a very high energy, such as uh, keyboard pads or distorted guitars. And a good mix should have a bit of both. And uh, therefore, if you look at a, at a mix file, and let me just see if we can import a file uh, quickly, something that it would give us a nice indication. So here's a little mix that I could just throw in for a second. And uh, if we just make, make this a little bit larger, we should always see that there is uh, little spikes poking out, which are the transients, and they need to be louder than the average energy. So some people call it the Bart Simpson haircut. Um, I guess that's okay um, either way, but uh, the big chunky bit in the middle here is the energy and the transients need to be louder and a good mix has both of these things and that's what we call the envelope. 
There is not a single meter that is perfect for all of these things, so I often switch between the meters or stay on my RMS meter, because RMS also gives you the peak at the same time, uh, just to give you an indication of what these meters do and what they're good for. I hope this is helpful to you, um, and I hope it will help you for your AUD 112 um, assignment. Any questions, email me at j.math at sae.edu. The uh, email is also in the text below. And I wish you sunny greetings from Byron Bay. Bye for now.